Why don't you give me a sign? This is Corinna Jane. That leaves a trail along that shore. It's not your problem, it's mine. With her brand new single, Give Me a Sign. As featured on BBC Introducing. It's just the way it's gotta be. Corinna Jane, give me a sign. Out now. Hey guys, uh, my name's Katie Arnson, if you don't already know that. Um, I'm in my second year of university, I'm studying contemporary dance. And on July 14th, I was diagnosed with melanoma, which is a scary word for skin cancer. Hello, I'm Sophia Jessica, and welcome to the Fan Carpet. That was well, fun, it's, yeah. well, it's wonderful to speak to you. Um, film's great, um, and you're, you're superb in it as well. Um, so if we go back to the beginning, uh, was there a defining moment for you to get into the film industry? Um, well, uh, I was actually studying music. I was at music school up in Scotland, and I... Um, had always wanted to act really. And I was doing like a lot of drama at school and stuff like that, but because the focus was on music, I wasn't really getting that much time in, um, into doing dramatic stuff. Um, and so the choice kind of came up whether or not I would end up doing what everybody else wanted me to do, which was to be a pianist and to go and go to music college um and sort of in amongst all of this going on I'd been scouted to be a model which was like a very unexpected um nice surprise um which had happened and so I kind of just took a chance really and used modeling as a as an opportunity to um sort of leave school and run away from Scotland and get to London um and then when I got to London I got an agent I was lucky that I met I met an agent through a friend and uh, that was my first agent and then I just kind of started auditioning really and so that there wasn't really a defining moment I did I very much learnt on the job and um, was doing it kind of hand in hand with my modelling career for a few years um, which was very good in some ways but actually more problematic in other ways you know consensus it's it modeling was like an amazing opportunity to make money and to travel and to um you know because i i didn't have family support so sort of meant that i could become financially independent very young which was obviously necessary um but it's also a tricky one because i think when you're a model as well I, I think now the attitude might be a bit different but 10 years ago there was definitely still an energy which was that I wasn't being taken as seriously as I could have been I think because I was modeling and so that was an interesting thing to to navigate but um but yeah so it kind of just happened gradually and then over the years the kind of the balance of modeling and acting shifted and and now I'm really just an actor um but it was basically a lot of auditioning I was auditioning for probably like a good four or five years before I started getting any kind of interesting work and uh, it was definitely a case of learning on the job and building up my confidence on the job um, which is obviously very different to my friends of mine who went to drama school and stuff like that so yeah all right that sounds, that sounds cool that sounds like a cool journey yeah it's had its moments yeah it is it has been cool yeah um and uh yeah and i you know i used to have like a, a really big chip on my shoulder that i hadn't been to drama school it was like i would meet other actors on jobs and i would hear that they'd gone to rada or lambda or Guildhall, and i'd go oh my god and i actually even considered quitting acting to go to drama school at one point because i was so set on this idea that you know having gone to drama school was like was like completely necessary to be successful and my agent was like no you're not gonna do that <laughs> you know um and but now I kind of look at it the other way around where I think actually because I didn't train formally 
maybe that has also given me other skills that could be a strength in a way you know because I'm probably coming at certain things from a slightly different place you know and um so now I feel quite relaxed about it but it took it took me years to come to terms with that sort of insecurity that I had which was that I hadn't trained um and I think yeah I think more and more there are actors who who didn't train and I think that's becoming a much more normal and even sort of um appreciated thing you know yeah you learn learn on the job it's uh, mm. probably the best way of doing it i think well, I mm. think uh, you learn yeah you learn by i doing. think especially especially with film i think i don't think you can teach film acting unless you're doing it i think theater is a really different thing and i think like if i was to do a play now i think i would probably feel a bit scared about certain things that i just haven't learned like voice and projection and stuff like that you know but i think in terms of film i think really it's really important to sort of just do it and and also fuck up and like be a bad actor a few times and and learn that way you know i think that's really important as well yeah, absolutely Definitely. absolutely so um, White Lie is an, is an interesting point of idea. What was it about the film that enticed you to get involved to bring Jennifer to life? Um, well, the script really jumped out at me. I, I, was, I read the script sort of and, and it was one of those ones, I always know I like something because I read it really quickly. <laughs> it's always those things that I keep, you know, when your mind drifts and you're like, oh, I don't, I don't know what just happened in that last scene. That I always know I don't like it then. And with White Lie, I just, I read it like front to back in the space of about an hour. Um, so I thought the writing was brilliant. And I thought that the, I thought the fact that you, and this isn't really a spoiler, but the fact that you find out very early on that um, Katie is lying about having cancer, I thought was really interesting because I thought, that in a lot of uh, stories that would be some kind of twist towards the end and I thought it was very interesting from an audience perspective that your kind of moral compass is being tested right from the very beginning because you know that she's doing something so unbelievably d deceitful um, and I liked Jennifer because she's just there's there's like a purity to her <laughs> that she's just very very loving and very supportive and very generous in the way that she loves within that relationship and I I just liked the idea of playing something that felt straightforward but not in a kind of boring way do you know what I mean and mm. I just come from another job where I was playing a sort of schizophrenic very tortured person in a sort of psychological thriller setting and so I really liked the idea of sort of grounding myself by by the next thing being something much more natural much more down to earth much more emotional and close to who I am I mean, I'm I'm not necessarily Jennifer in all of my relationships but you know I she felt very close to me and I, I liked that a lot you know. how, do you, how do you relate to her? Um, well, I think one of the things that we talked about a lot was um, how, although Katie is obviously lying about something very sort of specific, which is the fact that she's got cancer, that the sort of dynamic of their relationship is actually very similar to anyone who's ever been in a relationship with any kind of addict, really, you know, and and so I think I knew that I knew that feeling of being in a kind of toxic relationship where you probably know that you're being lied to, but you're not quite ready to um, be on that, that honest with yourself yet. Um, and so I sort of felt like I knew that side of her and I, I, I hope I'm a quite nice person and I think she's a very nice person and that was you know something that I thought felt you know I just thought I could do it justice really didn't feel like it was that far away from me you know yeah awesome um now this it's is also, it's also just yeah no go no, I was just going to ramble but it's, no, it's all right go for it well I was just I was just going to say it's it's I think sometimes you um 
you know, I, I'm not a method actor at all. I really, for me, that doesn't, it's not, that's not what works for me. But I do think that you can't help but absorb the sort of energy of what you're playing. And so I think you, um, it, it's nice to make decisions sometimes based on what you kind of want to inhabit for the next couple of months. And I think I, then I was in a mood, I was really in a mood to inhabit someone very giving and loving and straightforward and down to earth and not psychologically neurotic and tortured and, you know, all over the place, you know. That's wonderful. Um, so, um, obviously this is a drama, but do you have any preferred genres and any favourite films? Um, well, Whiplash is probably one of my favourite films ever. Um, I think drama, yeah, drama probably. I love a lot of films. I have to say I'm not a horror film person. That is the, probably the one genre that I just can't seem to really get into um i think it just feels too real in a really weird way <laughs> and i get too scared um but i love films like whiplash i love films like um um what do i love i mean i've just been watching breaking bad for the first time which i realize is unbelievably late to the party but <laughs> that um that kind of genre I find really exciting, kind of psychological, on the edge of your seat, but but based in reality in a in a way, you know, um, yeah, um, yeah. Sure. Um, there's a film as well for Breaking Breaking Bad on Netflix. I think it's called El Camino. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet because I wanted to. I wanted to do. Better Call Saul and then El Camino, El Camino, yeah. so that I could have the full journey. Um, but Breaking Bad was so intense that I needed a break. So I'm now on Shit's Creek, which is just amazing as well for a different okay. reason, you know. Yeah, very funny. They, um, mm. it has, uh, I think it just fi it just finished, didn't it? And uh, they won a ton of awards at the Emmys. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's cool. So White Lie had, a, um, had recognition at TIFF and various other film festivals, including Miami and Philadelphia. How does it feel to have the film recognised in that way? Yeah, it's lovely. I mean, you always want to feel like people like the work, you know, that you're doing. And especially with that movie, it was like so, everyone put so much into it. Um, and you never really know how something's going to be received. And sometimes you think you're making the best film in the world and then it's no one sees it. And with this one, I, I, I had a good feeling about it. I really hoped that it would be something that people would find interesting, but you just never know. So it's nice just to know that you're kind of, hopefully that your instincts were right, you know, and, um, yeah, it's just a film that I really loved working on. So I'm always really happy when I get to, plug something that I genuinely loved you know um and yeah I think it's an interesting film as well and I think it's nice that people are responding to that I think it's the fact that it was shot on film gives it a very lovely quality visually and I think the cinematography is beautiful I think the music is amazing um which was done by Lev who's also the editor of the film um and so, yeah, I just, I felt like I was working on something that was of a really good quality. And so, yeah, it's just nice that people are responding well, really. Yeah, cool. Um, mm. Yeah, um, Yoan mentioned, Yoan and Calvin mentioned Lev last, yesterday, because uh, he's also the brother yeah. of the director, so. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's that's really nice to have that close-knit community within, within making the yeah. film. And he and he was editing as we were shooting, so obviously now it wouldn't happen because of everything going on with the pandemic. But you mm. know, we were kind of shooting days, and then we would go over to the house that they were all living in, where Yona and Calvin and Lev were living, and he would kind of show us like assemblies of what he'd edited so far, and so it meant that we could really get some kind of understanding of where it was headed as we were making it, which is. A bit of a treat really you you don't always get that um but i had no idea he was doing the music until i saw the film and, and it, it was really the music that really stuck out at me as being really memorable 
Um, and I think the music in a way gives it an almost like a horror movie edge, which I think is quite interesting because it's so not a horror movie, but there are things about it that are fairly horrific, I suppose. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. Um, did, did you shoot it like sequentially, um, like chronologically or were you jumping around or? Totally jumping around. Um, and I actually, the, the film I mentioned before that I'd been playing a schizophrenic uh, psychological thriller movie, um, I finished that and I had a day in London and then I flew to Toronto. So it was a completely sort of incredibly intense experience. And I think we jumped in, I think my second day was that quite long scene at the end between the two of us that's quite emotional and quite sad. And that it was a night shoot. So it was like I'd sort of just arrived in Toronto. I'd just been filming for 12 weeks on this other thing. And then I was jet lagged and it was a night shoot. So it was like, I think I'd had sort of like two hours sleep, you know, and we went into this very intense scene and it was, yeah, it was intense. I was sleeping in between setups. It was like, there was a bed on the set that was part of the set. And I mean, it makes me sound so unprofessional, but I was just lying down and like having naps sometimes because it, I was just so tired. So we kind of started with that and then we went back and did a lot more of the kind of beginning stuff. But yeah, it was very location based really. It was more just about what was available at what point really. Yeah, um, they also mentioned that you didn't have long to, to form a connection with, uh, with Casey. Uh, no <laughs> no we had one the day I arrived we had one evening where we got a takeout like Casey and me and the and Calvin and Yona the directors and we read through two of the scenes as a sort of like semi-rehearsal thing and then the next day we started it was it was wild I I, I the thing of having one day in between jobs is is really psychologically quite confusing. I mean, I was, yeah, I was on the plane to Toronto, just like frantically trying to get my head around it. But in a way it was from a kind of acting perspective, that was quite nice as well, because it means that you don't have time to really overthink it. And, and sometimes it is nice just to go with your instinct and, you know, it depends on the job, but I think on that job, it really, it lent itself to being quite instinctive and and quite natural. So I I hope it worked. But yeah, no, we didn't have time. I think our first shot together, we had to be in bed together. And that was a really funny moment of just going like, okay, we're gonna just have to dive into this and get very close very quickly. Um, but she's amazing. She's a very generous actress and I, I loved working with her a lot really. Yeah. Awesome. Um, are there any are there any moments from set that will stick with you throughout the rest of your career? Um, yeah, I think shooting that long scene at the end was really. It was just a, it was an amazing feeling because I just felt like Casey and I were just very present with each other, and it was happening very naturally, and and. And I think the fact that I was so jet lagged and the fact that it was a night shoot was just, it meant that it really is burnt into my memory as like quite a big <laughs> moment because my body was just running on fumes, you know. And then it was very interesting because we, because it was shot on film and so they were constantly having to check the gate to make sure that no little bits of hair or something had like gotten into the film. And they came to us like two weeks later and they said, listen, none of Casey's footage is usable because there was a hair on the film so we then had to go back and reshoot all of her coverage from that scene that really emotional scene which is really hard to do as an actor like when you've you've done it and you've left it behind and then they come and say oh no you've got to go back there tomorrow <laughs> surprise it's um it's you know and so we then had to go back into it which I think makes it even more vivid for me you know and it was just a really I think it is a film that will stay with me for a really long time because it was um, it was an experience of working on something where everyone was very, very good at their jobs and very professional and very caring. And, you know, I hadn't always had that on films. I'd 
I'd worked on low budget films where everything was a bit all over the place and um and so in a way for me it's like a benchmark thing now of like how you should be treated and the level of, that you should be working at you know which I think is a good thing to have really Absolutely great. Um, so, um, are there any genres that you haven't done yet that you'd like to? I'd love to do more comedy. I'd really love to do more comedy. I've played quite a few characters now where I've been playing quite heavy roles. So I think I'd like to do something where I just get to turn up and like have a laugh, you know, for a few months. Um, so yeah, I think that that would be it. Cool. Um, yeah, I'd I'd imagine that with with White Lie you have to keep it keep the set quite uh, jovial uh, because the subject matter is quite heavy. Mm. Yeah, we did, and that is that was that was really nice. But you know, when we were then working, we were going into quite heavy places, so it was uh it was still kind of emotionally kind of tiring, you know. But yeah, it was very fun. That set, it was really fun. Yeah. Awesome. Um, are there any other aspects of the film industry that you'd like to pursue? Not really. I, I'm quite happy just acting, to be honest, and, and leaving the other jobs to the experts. But um, I've always been really interested in makeup. I really enjoy getting my makeup done and I love watching makeup artists. I think they're really... Um, fascinating to watch and so I think if there was another thing that if I had to choose I would probably choose makeup but I um yeah I'm under no illusions of I don't think I'm an actor that will one day direct I think I I, I like acting and that's kind of it really all right cool but I, I have my other stuff in terms of music and stuff like that as well and how's that how's that going are you managing to juggle the two yeah, I mean, it's it's been quite nice this year. Uh, sort of the one nice thing about having so much time off was that I played a lot more piano. So that's that's good. So I've been working on quite a lot of stuff um, to do with that. But, um, um, but yeah, piano has always kind of just been more of a private passion. But if I have a film that needs it, I'll bring it in. But otherwise, it's sort of not, it's not meant to be like a second career. You know, it's just more of a, a thing that I have for myself but I, I did play the piano in Emma which came out in February and that was a, a brilliant experience as well. Mm. Yeah with Anya Taylor-Joy mm. that was that was awesome. Mm. Yeah 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 that was amazing it was that was another brilliant experience actually. Wonderful wonderful mm. um, so obviously in these unprecedented times what are you looking forward to getting back to have you any projects in the pipeline that you're looking forward to getting back to when it's safe to do so yeah i've got two projects starting in uh january february time um one of them i can't talk about yet but the other one is a film with a, a brilliant filmmaker called floria sigismondi who's an italian canadian director and she's um directing a movie uh which is shooting in ireland and uh it's me annabelle wallace and rafi cassidy all right cool. um so yeah i'm very much looking forward to that and i'm also going to be working on a tv show which is still yet to be announced but um but yeah so i'm very i'm just very much looking forward to getting back to work really it's been a very weird year and it's been nice it's been nice to kind of have time off but it's never really fun when it's filled with uncertainty um and so i'm just yeah i'm looking forward to just being employed again really to be honest yeah yeah absolutely yeah. Uh, that's another <laughs> brilliant cast yeah. yeah yeah i'm so excited yeah um I'm so I have, excited. I, I ha i've had i've had the pleasure of meeting Rafi a couple of times um i haven't met annabelle yet um mm. but yeah but, um she was mm. she's phenomenal she's phenomenal in most in, in in everything that i've seen her in so you know mm. yeah yeah it's awesome um so um who inspires you in the industry um i love women like floria sigismondi and autumn de wilde because they are just an example of um 
having a very clear vision and a very particular style and really sticking to that. Um, and I love actresses like Olivia Coleman and Jessica Lang and um, you know even Angelina Jolie and I think it's when I started acting there was this sort of a weird thing which was that if you hadn't made it by the age of 30 you probably weren't going to and I think now it's changing and I love it when I, I see actresses who are older who are doing well because I think there's so many roles so many interesting roles for older women mm -hmm. um and it also gives you hope that you'll be working hopefully for a long time you know and so i always look to those actresses who have more life experience um because i just think they're phenomenal really you know and i do think that you get better at acting the older you get in a way like the more life you live the more experiences you have um so i kind of look up to those types of women really yeah yeah Awesome. Um, so um, is there a book that you're a fan of that hasn't been adapted to film or TV or Netflix yet that you'd love to be a part of? Oh, that's a good question. I'm looking at my bookcase. Well, there's an amazing book that came out this year called Three Women by Lisa T uh, Tadeo, T-A-D-D-E-O. Um, it's, ba it's, it's actually sort of non-fiction. It's, she, she spent like 12 years, I think, spending time with these three different women um writing kind of not their life story but very big parts of their lives and i think that would be an amazing film um just because the writing is so good um yeah i think that would be the kind of recent one that i read um i'm just having a look i mean i love anything by Catelyn moran um but yeah i think i think that lisa Tadeo book would be amazing wonderful i haven't read that one um i'll check it out um mm. with the popularity of streaming services like netflix so uh, what do you think the future of cinema is oh it's tricky isn't it i really hope that there are still cinemas i love going to the cinema i think i hope that people will always want that experience, not just of the big screen, but of kind of watching something collectively with other people. I think that there is something special about that that you don't get at, at home. Um, so I just hope, yeah, I really hope that it, it, it keeps being viable. It keeps being a viable option, you know, because I do think that it's not everyone can afford like a really fuck off big tv do you know what i mean mm. it's like you it's it's there is a sort of it's weird because streaming kind of it makes everything accessible to everyone but in a way the experience is slightly less so i just hope that there would still be cinemas because i think you could everyone hopefully can afford a cinema ticket but not everyone can afford like a massive projector screen and you know to have that cinema experience at home so i think um yeah i love the cinema i really i i love the cinema on my own actually that's something that i do quite a lot when obviously the world isn't ending um but yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely yeah i just want to get back into the cinema the last thing i saw was mulan um and that was oh was, really i haven't yeah, I was, seen that i was at the premiere for uh, for mulan they kept the, they had the premiere screening but they didn't do the interviews um mm. so i was down in leicester square that was the last time i was in mm. leicester square <laughs> oh, watched really? it the, uh, yeah. watched it at the end. i enjoyed it um yeah that whole, yeah yeah, whole yeah. Thing, i haven't I seen it. i think the last thing i saw in the cinema was oh what did i see oh no i actually went to the cinema in in between lockdowns i went to the cinema i think i i went to see tenet at the cinema okay. and and i I, it was nice to have that experience again, you know, but um, yeah, but I think before that, the last, and I, this is genuinely not a plug, I think the last thing I saw was Emma, because Emma was the last film to kind of come out in cinemas before lockdown, which is, I'm so happy that people got to see it in that way, um, but I think before lockdown, the last thing I did was probably the Emma premiere, which was seeing it in the cinema, um, 
but yeah I miss it a lot I hope it comes back and I miss theatre as well I really miss going to the theatre and I, I I actually also went once to the theatre in between lockdowns and it was it was amazing to go but it was also really bizarre because everyone was in masks and you know there's a there's a kind of gap of three chairs in between each set of tickets and um the sort of claustrophobic in me finds that quite comforting but actually it did feel like it was sort of missing a bit of the whole experience you know mm. so I'm really I'm really hoping that these these businesses don't you know drown and that they stay they stay open long enough to have things back to normal really yeah absolutely um and what, what are you hoping audience will take away from white light when they get to see it um I think I think it's um a quite nice exercise in empathy in a way because although you know that Kate um Casey's character Katie is doing something very deceptive hopefully you're still kind of rooting for her you know and so I think it does open you up to a sort of moral question where at the beginning you're going oh I'd never do that you know or you hear about that type of thing going on and you're like oh my god who could do something like that and I suppose I hope that the film opens you up to just being slightly more empathetic and asking a few more questions about why someone might have got to that place, you know. And so I suppose that's, yeah, I suppose that's what I hope people would get out of it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Uh, yeah, well, it's um, it'll be released soon uh, for all to mm. see, not just the festival, so yeah. that'd be cool. Um, yeah. But thank you so much for joining me today. This has been, this has been incredible. Um, I hope. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I wish you all the best for everything else that you do, and I look forward thank to you. seeing what you come out with next. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. You too. Take care. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye. And you. Bye. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more content next time. I'm just gonna try and keep smiling. on the largest of the Balearic Islands, Mallorca. With the turquoise waters of the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful mountainous landscape, the thriving city of Palma, quaint little market towns, a growing number of luxury hotels, it's no surprise that the likes of Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor like to holiday here. So come and join me as I take you round Mallorca. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.